So we are at my condo and we are taking the opportunity to sit down and review the script and take advantage of Jordan's prowess with English. So lines will be signed and not fingerspelled unless it's the name of a person or place, proper nouns. As I'm writing, I know the English in the script isn't 100% correct. It's because I have an American Sign Language brain and Jordan has an English brain, so. I have been working as an American Sign Language and English interpreter for over a year now. Like, I'm just, I'm just correcting the English here because the way that it was written wasn't clear. Maybe, maybe I misunderstood what you meant. Like, like a fabricated history. You fabricated the history. It's not real. So that's what this means. Oh, oh okay. I, I thought you were talking about no, me. No, like no, I no, made no, this no, up. No, of course no, I made I'm the just, script I'm up. Editing, okay, I get it. Right. I really needed somebody with a deep understanding of deaf culture. And so that's why I brought Jordan in. He's very much that person. And on top of that, his English is really good. You understand what I'm going for? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Now I'm just thinking how to, like, what does that look like in English? <laughs> hey, don't think too hard. The translating part from one language to another is not the most challenging part. I think the challenging part is to keep in mind that the audience will have members who are deaf and hearing, and so you want them both to laugh at the same jokes. You understand how this works? So Ariel, she comes in like this. Right, 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 right. No, 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 no. I, I understand. This is the, uh, this is the, you know, the physical comedy bit. I, I understand. It's clear. I just don't know if people are going to laugh. Even though one might be funny in a deaf context and not funny in a hearing context, or jokes that are funny because they're acoustically based, and you don't want deaf people to sort of go, I don't, understand. I don't get why that's funny. Are, you want our heads to hit together? So, right. So Aslan, uh, Ariel. I mean, Ariel. Ooh, <laughs> don't be careful so of that. Ariel. Up. The land above water is the hearing world, and the land below sea is Atlantis, inhabited by deaf mermaids who communicate with sign language. Adventurous Princess Ariel secretly explores the world above water against her father Triton, her brother Alistair, and her butler Sebastian's wishes. One day, she rescues Eric, a young doctor and a speech therapist, cousin Christy, during a shipwreck. In moments, Ariel and Eric become infatuated with each other before she disappears back underwater. Ariel consults the evil sea witch Ursula and her minion, trades her tale and knowledge of sign language to become human. On land, Ariel and Eric fall in love. The sea witch tries to destroy the young lovers, but is conquered by Triton. The mermaids and humans all live happily ever after, learning both sign language and spoken word, on land and in the sea. I cannot help but notice in the story of Ariel that there is a very interesting parallel with your own life. It's so ironic. It's so ironic. And People would ask me, why did you start seeing voices? And I, I always have this classic line of, because I fell in love, and it's like blank. <laughs> fell in love with ASL. <laughs> Short story, um, Jack is very, very talented. If I did not have him as my first, very first ASL teacher, I don't even know if I would have continued. I kind of, I was attracted to him when, uh, when he started teaching the class, and back when he had a girlfriend. <laughs> And then they broke up, and then we started dating. This whole thing ties into my family's values. And there were points where mom kind of noticed that um, I was talking about Jack a lot. And she was, she was just mentioning to me, she said, well, I will never accept you dating a deaf person. My parents' um, perception of deaf people has always been very, very, very negative. They have never seen a deaf person drive a car, own a house, have a job, have kids, lead a normal life, you know? So that's their perception. And they wanted me to be with a successful man, with a doctor, with a lawyer. And Jack seems to be the complete opposite of, uh, of everything they have in mind. I had my battles with them. 
And uh, at this point, it's either I, I fight for myself and I stand for my rights, or I, I, I fall into their, their agenda. She works so hard for Seeing Voices Montreal. So I have a lot of respect for her. Uh, now I get to invite uh, Aslan Wang, who holds a McGill BSc and is a master's candidate in physical therapy. She is the recipient of the Dr. Alice Chan Yip Multiculturalism Award, and she will tell us about a very special group that she herself founded called Seeing Voices Montreal. I just used American Sign Language to say my name is Aslan and I'm a soon-to-be physiotherapist. People of the deaf and hard of hearing community often find themselves in a healthcare situation where sign language interpretation is not available or literacy levels are ignored. In 2012, Seeing Voices Montreal was born out of this concern. Thanks to her generous support, I have been able to help the deaf community fight for their right to equal access. Thank you once again, Dr. Chan. We're so excited for what is to come. Given her experience with working with students, children with disabilities, those who are deaf and blind, she has a lot of empathy. She always thinks about other people first, and she puts herself second. That's just how she is. I know what I believe in in life. I, I have my values. I, I know what's right and what's wrong, and I know that I have to fight for what I believe in, otherwise i just be a fake. And so I had to dissociate myself from my parents. Ever since I met Jack's family, they have welcomed me with open arms. I mean, it's, it's kind of filled the hole that, that, that has been there in my life, you know? The, the warmth of family. What I'm missing from my own, I'm getting from other people. Like I, I, I'm way better now, like I'm okay. So there I am, still doing singing voices, doing what I love. Today is the first day of editions. I'm going to be old and I'm going to be crispy. I see rules as limits. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> There's lots of hearing actors, but the deaf actors, we don't have a whole lot. 